You Can Live Forever is a new film that recently debuted at the Tribeca Film Festival, and this is in fact a Jehovah's Witness romance story. It's about a lesbian teen named Jamie who is sent to live in a Jehovah's Witness community, where she falls hard for a devout witness girl and the two embark on an intense affair with consequences that will reshape the rest of their lives. If you're new to my channel, I was raised a Jehovah's Witness. I've talked about that extensively. Most people who watch my channel regularly already know that. I was born into a Jehovah's Witness family. I left in my early 20s and I've been much happier ever since. And so naturally, whenever someone actually makes a film about this, I am so excited to watch it because I feel like we're finally entering that point where my generation is getting old enough to make movies and things are getting made and people are starting to actually make films about Jehovah's Witnesses finally. Before now, there's there just haven't been that many. There's apostasy. There's a film with Emma Thompson called The Children Act that tackles the blood transfusion doctrine in court. And there's some other things, but that wall that we refer to as the mainstream just hasn't really been broken into yet by a Jehovah's Witness film or one that's been made by an ex-Jehovah's Witness or at least is about that subject. And I would love to make a film about Jehovah's Witnesses one day as well. And I hope that I can do that. This movie did a lot of things for me that I didn't expect I'd ever see in a film. I can't even begin to describe how euphoric it feels for me to see characters in movies talk about things that are so real to me and, and so much a fabric of my identity, but also to just get it so right. The filmmakers behind this movie, I have met with them privately through Zoom. I've talked to both of them and they were kind enough to send me a private link to this movie, which is how I saw it. And I'm just glad that they got to make this movie because it's going to reach so many people. Whether or not you're in that faith right now and would like to leave what's known as PIMO, physically in, mentally out, or you've been physically out and mentally out for many years, or maybe you're in the faith and you have doubts, you're questioning, this movie is going to do a lot for you. And I think that it's super important because it's going to show people in that faith that there is a path out, there is a safe way out, especially for people who are gay, bi, straight, pansexual, trans, whatever, it doesn't matter, like there's going to be a pathway for you to find happiness. I was also blown away by the two lead performances by Anwen O'Driscoll and June Laporte. I'm sorry if I said either of those names incorrectly, but I thought both of them were great in the movie and they had excellent chemistry. I deeply cared for both of them, especially for the lead character, Jamie, who plays the quote unquote worldly girl who's falling for a Jehovah's Witness and having to go to meetings and go out in service to do things with her just because she wants to be around her. She's forced to do all this Jehovah's Witness stuff that she doesn't want to do. But also in the case of Marika, the girl that she's falling for, Marika clearly is having doubts, but has no idea how to manifest them, which this film captured something that is so difficult to do that I've thought about a lot while I'm writing potentially my Jehovah's Witness movie that I've talked about a few times. It's really difficult to accurately depict brainwashing. It's, it's really hard because it's internal and you don't really talk about it and you don't have like a visual reference for it, like holding up a photograph or drawing a picture. So it's, it's entirely internal. And so you have to witness Marika, who is clearly brainwashed, who somehow wraps her head around this idea that, yeah, I could be with you and still be a Jehovah's Witness and still get into paradise. And I'm like, no, no, honey, you can't. They're not gonna like you because you like girls and they hate that shit. And I was really taken by how accurately they depicted that brainwashing. That's extremely difficult to do. It's also an extremely romantic movie. I really found myself caring about both of these characters and their future. And without getting into any spoilers, of course, I really liked how it ended. Whenever it comes to movies that are about faith or that have themes that are perhaps very specific to a certain religion, or a group of people or a time period or something, you always wonder like, are you going to really connect with that unless you were there or unless you were part of it? And I can't tell you that answer because I was there and I know exactly what it feels like to be a Jehovah's Witness. And I also know what it feels like to be queer and not know how to tell anybody about it. So when it comes to this film, I do think they achieved a lot that's going to make the average viewer who's never experienced any of those things 
attach themselves to these characters and care about it. The dialogue is well written, the actors all do a great job, even the actors who are portraying Jehovah's Witnesses, because I started to really be very uncomfortable around some of those characters, and that's, you know, a testament to their ability. I'm glad this film was made and that it exists, but I'm ecstatic that it was made with care and that it was crafted with real skill, that great actors and two great filmmakers and writers that I hope have a, a beautiful future made this movie. When it comes out, please do seek this one out. I think that it's really damn good and also a very important movie. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.